Hi and hello guys. So in continuation with the last uh, Raspberry Pi PQ video, in this one we shall take a look into the usage of push button. That is different push button activities as in like simple single press, double press, long press. And also we shall take a look into the usage of interrupts. So without any further delay, let us get started. So instead of uh, typing the codes line by line, in this video I shall just uh, copy and paste the uh, codes that I have already written. You can find all these examples in the GitHub page for the Raspberry Pi Pico. I will attach the link for that in the description of this video. Please do check that out. Okay. So first we will start with the simple push button press activity. So we have got the button declared over here or the instance of a button created. So there are different ways uh, you can connect a push button to a microcontroller or in this case Pi Pico. Either you can set the button to be pulled up by default or you can set the button to be pulled down by default. Say if you pull up the push button, the GPIO on which you have connected the button will be set high if you pull it up and if you set this to pull down the GPIO on which you have the push button connected will be low or zero by default. So if you set the push button to be pulled up or pulled high by default then you need to connect the other end of the push button to ground and then when you press the push button and then the GPIO will be set to a value of zero which you can read or use for other activities and say if you have uh, initiated the button as pulled down by default then you need to connect the other end of the push button to VCC or 3.3 volts and when the button is pressed the GPIO will be set to a value 1 ok. So if you use a pull down change this to 1 and if you have it as pull up just have it as 0 over here. So that is the logic of using a push button with a microcontroller board or in this case a Pi Pico ok. So there is a basic limitation with this technique. So here we have a while loop constantly running and checking for the value of the GPIO on which we have the push button connected. This method of constantly checking for the value of the GPIO is called polling ok. So this method is called polling this is not very effective. I will explain to you guys in a short while as to why this is not effective ok and depending upon the value that is polled you can carry out other activities below over here ok. So first I am just printing that the button is pressed and then I am uh, printing the value of the GPIO on which we have got the uh, push button connected. So let us take a look as to how this code works ok. So this code is running and now let me push the push button. So as you can see I just pushed the button for a fraction of a second but even then so many button press activities have been detected. This is due to the bouncing of the GPIO. So this is why polling is not ideal for turning on or turning off any relays or LEDs ok. So just see what happens when we use a LED. Now see what happens. So ideally each and every time I press on the push button uh, the LED should be toggled but that does not happen that is mainly because of the way in which the polling works ok. So if you are going to use polling in your project I would suggest you to use two push buttons one for turning on a LED or a relay and then the second one for turning off. So that would be much better instead of using one push button for toggling. So in this second example see what happens if I use two push buttons for turning on or off an LED. Ok. 
okay so this appears to work all right but if you are going to check on the push button values you will still get the values uh, the same way you got it in the previous example okay so if you want to toggle any relay or an led i would suggest you to use two push buttons okay so proceeding further there is a better alternative than using the polling method that is the use of interrupts okay so in this example till this part it is the usual stuff uh, initiating or creating an instance of an led and a push button and here we have got a function that is defined or that will be called by the interrupt when the interrupt condition is met okay so and then we have got the instance of the interrupt over here so in the interrupt has two parts one is called the trigger and the second part is called the handler so this trigger as the name suggests triggers the interrupt and this handler is what executes a response to this trigger okay so in this case the handler is a toggle led function that toggles this led and uh, if you take a look into the trigger what we are actually doing is we are actually detecting the falling edge of the push button so as i mentioned earlier when we create an instance of a push button that is pulled up the default value will be high so when you push the button the gpio value reduces to low or zero so it falls from high to low and so we are detecting that fall over here okay so by default it is 1 and with the push of the push button the value reduces to 0 that is it falls from 1 to 0 and this is what we are detecting or this is what triggers the interrupt okay so if you set this to pull down then this should be irq underscore rising okay i hope uh, this is clear and all these comments also should make things clear for you okay so let us take a look as to how this works okay so unlike the polling method the interrupt method worked more efficiently and uh, it toggled the led each and every time the button was pressed okay so this is why i suggest people to use interrupts instead of using the polling method okay so i hope uh, that you have got some basic idea of interrupts via this example so i have got an interesting example over here in this example we'll be using only one push button to carry out two activities that is uh, we'll be detecting single press and double press events so when the push button is pressed once one led will be toggled that looks straight forward and when the push button is pressed twice another led will be toggled so this looks fine on paper right but what will actually happen is when you press the push button twice the first press is detected as one activity and the first led will be turned on and with the subsequent press of the push button that is the with the double press another led will be turned on though you expect only one led to be turned on with the double press event both the leds will be turned on that is the main limitation of uh detecting single press and double press using interrupts okay so i have added this example just for knowledge sake just to help you guys learn uh, out of this example okay so just see what happens so as you can see these are double press events though only one led should be turned on both the leds are being toggled so now for single press event only one led is toggled okay okay so this detection of the double press and single press is based on the debounce time i have set over here so this debounce time is typically something around uh, 200 milliseconds for a typical push button but this can vary from push button to push button so you need to 
play around or if you have a data sheet you can get the specs from the data sheet and then we are calculating a delay between the uh, different button presses or between different interrupts so this works but at the same time this does not work because even though it is a double press activity uh, the first press is being detected as one activity and the second press as the other and that is why we had the both the leds turning on for the double press okay so now let us take a look at an alternative method that you can use for detecting the various push button activities that is short press double press and long press so we have the code here for detecting the different activities of the push buttons so this uses a switch library from peter's uh, git okay so in order to use this program you need to have the a switch library you can get the a switch.py file either from peter's git or as always i have the a switch.py file listed in the library folder of my raspberry pi pico git page okay so now assuming that you have got the a switch.py file downloaded i'll show you as to how you can add it to the pi pico head over to the file menu and then choose open and then choose this computer so i have got the a switch.py file downloaded select that and choose open so the file will open in thorny while having this file selected in the tab over here choose file and then save copy and then choose raspberry pi pico and here assign the same name do not change the name a switch dot py okay and then choose okay alternatively you can choose file save as and then raspberry pi pico and then follow the same steps over here okay so now we have got the file added to the raspberry pi pico so like in the usual case uh, we have the button and the led instances created if you scroll down you can take a look at the different functions that have been uh, declared so first we have a timer instance created i have already made a video on using timers with raspberry pi pico in micro python there is a separate uh, raspberry pi pico playlist and uh, raspberry pi pico micro python playlist that you can check out i will leave the links for both the playlists in the description of this video okay first i have got a toggle function that will be called for a short press of the push button and then i have got another function that is called a toggle to so this will be called for a double press of the push button and then i have got another function which says start timer so this function will be called when the push button is pressed for prolonged duration the timer will be initiated and the led blinking pattern will be started with the long press of the push button okay so logically you might ask me as to why i have got another toggle to function when i could have just used the first function okay so there is a slight difference that you can notice over here so in this one it just toggles the led so whereas in this case this de initiates the timer so when i long press the push button it will start the timer and it will set the led to blink and when i double press the push button it will stop the timer that is it will stop the uh, blinking of the led and then it will toggle the led as well so that is why these two functions are separate i hope uh, it is a bit clear to you now okay instead of led underscore two this can just be led dot toggle so here are the different uh, push button related activities so double underscore func is the double press activity so when the push button is pressed twice the second led is toggled so the toggle underscore two is being called and the second led is toggled so here instead of the usual simple press function we are using a release function this is mainly because we have used a double press function over here see if you don't use the double press function or a long press function you can just use the simple press function or a short press function over here say if you use 
a simple press function or a short press function and then if you use the double press function what will happen is one led will be triggered for the first press and then the second led will be triggered for the second press so two leds will be turned on or toggled or two activities will be carried out for one double press event so that is why we have gone through the trouble of using a library and all we don't want that to happen so that is why we have got the release function over here so let us take a look as to how this works so here is a simple press the onboard led is being triggered so now let me press the push button twice the second led is toggled and see what happens if i long press the push button so the led has started blinking so in order to stop the led from blinking we need to double press the push button so the led blinking has stopped and now you can turn off the led by using the double press or double press activity again okay okay so guys that is pretty much it for this video so we have seen a couple of different things in this video so thanks for watching take care and bye bye